Hey everybody, it's springtime and as spring cleaning happens, it's a good time to talk about spring cleaning our own body. Uh, in my recent video series, I interviewed Tyler Pennypacker, one of our nutritionists on detox and how to avoid retoxification with foods and things. And now I'm gonna get into more of the medical aspect of detoxification and hopefully bring some clarity because the word detox is a buzzword in the, in the, the social media and Google universe. And so hopefully this brings some clarity on what real medical detox experienced by a physician is, is actually all about. So it's gonna be a multiple part video series as many of my videos are. And the first thing is gonna be how do toxins affect you? After that, we're going to go over what is the timeline for detoxifying your body, then what types of toxins exist, then we're going to talk about how we stop the retox, then we need to understand how does the body actually detoxify, then we're going to talk about boosting those detoxif detoxification pathways with supplements, IVs, and different modalities. So. With that being said, let's start our first section, which is gonna be on how do toxins affect you. Now, I don't wanna spend a lot of time here because unfortunately there's not a ton of research on how toxins affect humans. It's something that's unfortunately kind of covered and, and swept under the rug as being a, oh, toxins don't affect you, you're fine, there's plenty of chemicals in the world that are, that are considered um, safe until proven guilty, and that's just not true. But I went through a couple name grabs to, to list any symptom can basically be from a toxic exposure. So nausea, stomach, pain, vomiting, poisoning, um, illnesses, dizziness, unhealthy, whatever. Many, many different ways that toxins affect you. One that's less known is that Alzheimer's disease, dementia, Parkinson's, those are also proven to be um, at least contributed to by toxic overload. Um, this is a list of flu symptoms and viral infections. Um, cancer is on the list. And so th this is a, an image I found from Google that, that goes over just a few of the, the different chemicals out there in our world. So it's, it's a list of mercury, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, um, PBDs, all of these things. And I just wanna show you, uh, we'll zoom in so you can see it. If you look over here, even though there's minimal research, they're showing that that's proven to harm brain development. This one's linked to cancer. This one is toxic to the hormonal system. This one is linked to cancer and birth defects. This one is um, disruptive to the, hum the hormone system. This one causes cancer and reproductive effects. This one causes another brain disorder, um, thyroid disorder, liver and kidney damage, more cancer and nervous system problems. So the idea that how do toxins affect you, you may not know, and ultimately it doesn't really matter because you need to know that it is a contributed cancer. They very well study that. It's a contributor to any and all disease. The more toxins you carry, the earlier you have disease. Now, different people have different genetics where some two people may be exposed to the same thing and one gets sicker than the other. That's from genetics that um, change detoxification or someone may, may struggle to detoxify more than the next person. Flint, Michigan is a great example of that. In Flint, everyone is, was exposed to lead because of the water supply and not everyone got sick, not everyone got lead poisoning. And so that's a perfect example of population differences. So I like to talk about the story of BPA because BPA has a very interesting story. BPA, as you've probably heard, is plastic bottles and whatnot. And so BPA actually started out as an estrogen drug. They actually started using it to try to prevent miscarriages. So while BPA was being studied as an estrogen and trying to prevent miscarriages, they actually discovered another molecule called DES. And in that process, they learned that DES is way more powerful than BPA as far as an estrogen. So they actually stopped using BPA as an estrogen and instead they started using DES. For many women, I believe in the 70s, 80s, got DES to try to prevent miscarriages. Lo and behold, unfortunately, it was linked to multiple, multiple cancers over time. So much so that not only the parent that got the DES, the child also had to worry about cancer decades later if the mother took the DES. That's how scary DES is. And what scares me is that BPA is a close relative to what DES was. Not the same, but still. And then later, after BPA had lost its purpose in the miscarriage world, it was actually discovered by a plastics company to be a soft plastic that, that holds water really well. And there you have BPA took off as a use in all plastic things, basically. 
The thing you may not know is that BPA is also found in receipt paper. It's the, if you ever see the shiny side of a receipt paper, usually like if you go to Lowe's or something, there's ads on one side that's, that's just kind of dull. And then the other side is glossy. That glossy film is the thing that's burned by the thermal printer to actually see the text that you have on it. That's why if you leave a receipt paper out too long, um, the, the text on it can fade but the, the dull side with all the advertisements doesn't ever dull. And so that shiny lining is BPA. So if, when you're grabbing your receipts, this is a little nutty, but when you're grabbing your receipts, try to grab it from the dull side, fold it over so the BPA touches the BPA and you're only touching the non-BPA side. It's also found in your aluminum cans. If you ever look inside of an aluminum can and you see a shiny, almost waxy coating on the inside, that's actually a BPA lining. Now, over time, they've been trying to trade out BPA so that you'll find products that are BPA free. But what you may not know is there's BPB, BPS, BPAF, there, there's all kinds of other things. So just because something is listed as BPA free does not mean it doesn't have bisphenol. It just means it does not have bisphenol A. So the, the way I want to end it is say, how do toxins affect you? They can affect you in all kinds of ways and we could talk about it for hours, but ultimately who cares? Toxins are causing whatever symptoms you might be having and they need to be out of your body. So what are we going to do about it? The next step in this video series is we're going to talk about the treatment timeline of detoxification. Too often people just think, oh, if I do a 21 day juice cleanse and I'm detoxed. No, not in the slightest. So we're going to get into the medical aspects of the treatment timeline of detoxification. So check out that video next.